Hi, I'm Stephanie Raza. Welcome to Nature Sketch Crates. Go out and sketch a mountain sweet pitcher plant instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch a pitcher plant. First, make sure you have all the materials ready to go. Head out to a garden, park, or go ahead and sketch a plant at home. For this video demonstration, I'm going to be sketching this pitcher plant I purchased from California Carnivores. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, observe and paint. Don't get too caught up with the details or accuracy. Just relax and have fun. Let's get started. So to draw this, I'll be applying the same method used in the step-by-step -step painting mountain sweet pitcher plant to draw this pitcher plant and paint it. So we'll be starting with a drawing or a tracing of sorts. Then moving on to adding a couple layers of paint and then finally with some ink lines. So first we'll start with the drawing and best thing to do is to decide what you want to include in your drawing. I think I'm going to include this, this, and this leaf. So just take this And I'll put it up to my plant and kind of position it where I want it to be and do a little bit of an outline. Now this is not exact, of course, this is just going to give me a basic sizing and shape. I can even put marks where I think, like where the hood is, maybe where the lip is where it ends here and that'll help me out a little bit and where, maybe like where it starts curving in and then I'll add this one in too and maybe I'll bring it in a little bit further because it will look better in my composition that way I try to keep them basically where they are in real life but I fit with it a little bit too just to make it all look a little nicer in my eyes and then the last one it's kind of drawing the outline there too and all these little lines can be left behind so I'm gonna have to erase them so it looks kind of crazy to start of really light lines. And then I'll start to draw in the plant itself. So I'll draw in each leaf. And I like to start from the left for a lot of reasons. And my perspective now is a little bit different, but I will use it. And I'm just going to draw in the plant as I see it in those three parts. Just drawing really, making really light marks. And then I can draw darker on top when I'm adding the details. And it's just a sketch, so don't get too carried away with everything being exact. Just think of this as a shape, it's like kind of a round shape here, then it kind of juts out and straight down. And don't worry too much about getting that exact, exact curvature or length. Let's get it in. And then up, then it gets a little bit wider at the top, but it rounds right here. And then of course there are some veins inside, so I'll add those here on top of the inside top of the hood. And then inside here, which I think is the mouth, could be wrong. And these veins are not accurately placed. I'm starting with the darker one, and you may not be able to see it, but it adds kind of a place to start and then I add the lighter ones. 
around it. And I'm going to do the same with the veins on the tube as well. So not exact. Curve might be a little off. If you really don't like it, you can erase it, but yeah, I don't like it. I'm going to erase that. It's too off. I want it a little bit more curved out. I'll just erase it. And it doesn't matter about having a little bit of marks. This is just a sketch. It'll add character to your drawing, or to your sketch and your painting. Let's add it in all these veins, just not quite haphazardly, but you know, not exact. Getting an idea of the plant doesn't need to be an exact representation. And then I'm going to move on to the next one. Adding in the outside shape. And I have this rough sketch that we traced to kind of help me with that. And it curves around. And I'm redefining these edges based on what I see. a little bit further down just to meet that other part of the drawing I felt was important to add. And now I'm going to add in this last picture plant here, uh, leaf. And starting with the part that I think is most important just to the shape and position just the hood and the lip. So I feel like I need to get those right to make it look right. So I'm gonna add those in first. And then I'm gonna connect this bottom with the top. This might look a little bit different from your perspective, from the camera's perspective, and the video from what I'm seeing. So you maybe Viewing this slightly different. And then I connect the two. Then the outside, even it out, that's out a little bit there, and then curves back in. Just connecting each of those. And there's some. Um, size that looks smaller on the inside back part there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of veining, starting with the thicker veins first again. And if you don't like it, you can erase it. I don't like that. There's actually a, a dot here that's a little darker and a dot here. And those might be particular to this plant. I'm not sure I don't see them on any of the other ones, any other tubes. But there's a line, a vein going straight down into that. And so the, the veins I pay a little bit more attention to are the ones that are a little darker and more apparent. So one reason I add those in first. And the rest, you know, you can kind of fudge a bit and add in whatever way might work for you. So once I get those main veins in, I'll just kind of add these other veins that are a little bit lighter and less apparent. And they kind of go all over the place. And I think this is actually more curved, so I'm going to redefine that. And that's it's okay to step back and redo stuff. Just be 
Make sure you don't get caught up in it and take too much time redoing a few things. And this continues on here, so I'm going to start here and kind of do a light touch and then draw a line going in and down in order to make that kind of connection. And um, I think this, this where it curves, actually goes out like this. So I'm going to redo that as well. Like I said, it's okay to redo a few things, just as long as you don't redo too much. There's some parts that I've noticed after the fact, and there are marks left behind, and that is totally fine. All right. So now that I have, oh, I'm gonna add a little bit of the veining in the inside here, uh, inside this tube, you can see. All right. Now that I have all of those elements drawn in, I'm going to move on to adding the paint. So I have these paint colors in my palette still left over from the Mountain Sweet Pitcher Plant step by step. And I saved them so that I could use them here. And all the colors carry over into this pitcher plant as well, so I can reuse those here. And I just revived the paint with a little bit of water, making sure to clean off my brush in between colors. And then you're ready to go. So I'm take a little bit of this very light color and dab it off onto my so light yellow color. Add water to it and dab it off onto my towel and then check it. It's a little bit concentrated still, so I'll add even more water. Dab it on my towel and check it again. I like that a lot better. I'm gonna take it and you can see the yellowish color in all of these leaves and add it as that base coat. It's a nice little wash over the whole thing. Pick up some more for the others. So very much more apparent in this more juvenile leaf. And in between I'm dabbing my brush off onto my towel. A little bit of um, probably left over from the eraser on my paper. I'm just gonna leave it there till it, this dries and some of the paint gets outside. I think that just adds character. It's good little mistakes. So I'll let this first layer of paint dry and then I'll move on to the next. It shouldn't take long because I didn't add a lot of water to the paper itself. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of the green color. There isn't a lot in this plant, but you can see a little bit here on the top, um, a little bit at the bottom, and in here, the very bottom here. I am really curious, I'm not going to do it for this demonstration, but I would love to cut this open and look inside and see what it looks like. I just got this from the plant shop yesterday afternoon. So I'm check that on my paper. It needs a little bit more water. And then check it again, looks good. Dab it on my towel after I pick some up. I'm just gonna stuff out of the way. And I'm gonna add it to the plant. And all those areas I just mentioned, so just a little bit at the top. If it's too dark like that, even though I checked it, it's still too dark. But don't worry, it's just a sketch. Just kind of move it around a little bit. Dab it off in your towel, put a clean brush to it, and then it'll kind of create a little bit of a gradient. It's a little bit on the bottom here as well. It's kind of like a darker color up to there. And none of this is exact. This is all just an approximate of this plant. Just a quick study of it. And I don't really see any of that green in this leaf here. There's a little bit where this curves at the bottom. Again, I'll let that dry, shouldn't take long, and then add some more paint. So now this is dry, I can add another layer of paint. And 
guess this rusty red is the right color. I don't have to really change it at all. I'm going to go ahead and add water to my palette and make it really light. Add that first initial wash or layer of paint. Dabbing it off onto my towel first and then adding it in to my image. Very light wash of color over the whole thing. And it's most apparent in those areas. And then kind of a little bit lighter in the other areas. Um, not in all spots. It's just kind of here and there. Let's add it in before I see it. So I think that that's pretty good coverage for now. It's a little darker on the top than it is on the bottom. A little more green on the bottom. Then this one, I start on the bottom and work my way up because that's the darker area. But that way I don't get the inside too dark. It kind of has these vein lines. I'll start putting those in a little bit. But mostly worrying about getting that color up through to the top a little bit. And the edges being a little darker, I can kind of go over them. But more they'll stay in that wet area that I just painted to get that color in there. And it's pretty red. And then I'll get this last leaf, adding color in again, starting the paint in the darker areas, and then kind of moving it into the lighter areas. That will help me make sure that the concentrated paint stays more in those darker areas. And as I paint, it'll become less concentrated, less paint pigment will be on my brush. And as a result, there will be a lighter color. Add a little bit more there. And it's kind of sparingly throughout in this one. It's mostly up here. Color's mostly at the top in this leaf. And then just a little bit throughout the bottom. This should be pretty dry, so I'm going to add some of this magenta color It's on the inside here, you can see. And what I'll first do is just add a very light, light wash over the area. And that's too dark, so I'll get the paint off my brush. Just kind of pull it through. There's This is a dark area anyway, that's why I started there. It's kind of a shaded shadow area. Can pick up a little bit more since that's all wet you can just kind of add a little bit more pigment and if it's too much you can just take your brush clean brush and pull it up to the area that's a little bit of a darker area anyway and inside of this is also this kind of magenta color a little bit too dark so just Taking the paint off my brush and then pulling it through kind of creates this little gradient. These are still pretty dry, so if I just avoid the area that I just put the paint in, and it's a little bit there too. There's still a little bit of pigment on my brush. I can add some of this, start with the, a little bit of the deeper colors. Uh, the, this rusty red color that I have. And I'm going to add that in. Let me take a couple layers. So, see on the lip, 
top of the hood. And then I'm gonna start in the areas that have the darker color to it. I'll pick up just a little bit more paint. Go ahead and just add more paint with a rust, rusty red oxide, and a little bit of magenta. And you may have to improvise in the field a little bit without having a formula. Kind of figuring out what color it is. You can add a little bit more until you get that color again. Test it on your strip. And that looks pretty good. Be a little too magenta -y. so I'll add a little bit more of the rust color and the red oxide. Making sure not to use too much so I can use it for other paintings and test it on my strip. And oh, yeah, I like that. Okay, now I have a lot of paint, but that's why it's better to use the formulas. tip so I'm going to roll my brush a little bit on the paper and then I'm going to add it in. There we go. I did need some new paint. It's always good to bring your paint along just in case you need new paint. And I'm just going to add this to all these darker areas including the veins. Start adding those in. straighter lines in the veins. But again, not being exact, I made a little mistake there. It just adds more character. It's not a big deal. And adding some kind of random lines. Nothing has to be exact, just to add it in. This is just an idea of this plant, not an exact. So if you make mistakes, it's not a big deal. And you don't have to worry about getting everything exactly right. And those veining are 
the veins are, look good. I'm gonna go back, let that dry, and work on the inside of the mouth again. I think it's the mouth. Let's work on the inside of this leaf that you can see this area here, and I just have this darker magenta color. It's moved a bit. I'm not trying to get it exact, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to add in some veining here, and it's very magenta, they're very purpley. On the inside, whereas the outside has kind of these a little bit more reddish color. The inside of this has a more of a purple. Also darker, like lay around here in the lip and on the hood. So I wonder if that might be to attract prey. That's something that if you're doing the sketch, you can add in. I'll just keep adding some more in this side on this leaf. It has the same thing going on these dark purple magenta veins. Add those in. And there's even a little bit of magenta, I think, in these, these dots that are on the bottom. Which, this is the only leaf out of all of these that I see that on. I mean, maybe I'm missing it on the others and just don't see it, but I think that's the only one of those. This one's also a lot darker on the bottom. I'm going to add in a little bit more color to these. I'll take a lighter wash of this, this red color and bring it over this area. And I should have done the other leaf first, but this right here, it's okay. And darken. Kind of starting with the deeper color here and drying off my brush with a little bit of water and taking a wet clean brush to create a gradient as I did before. And this just looks kind of dark, so I might add, I might create a darker color. And you can do that by adding green and red together, which are the complementary colors. So I'll take a little bit of green, a little bit of red. You can see it creates a darker color. You can just paint a little bit of red over this too. Maybe I'll demonstrate that for you first. Take a little bit of red that doesn't, this rusty red, that doesn't have a lot of pigment in it. So I'm going to and you can see that it looks dark, a little darker than the other areas because there's already green painted down there on the bottom. For consistency's sake, I'm going to do that to the other one too, since this one has that same color going on. And I'm going to add a little bit darker up here as well because it is darker up by the lip area and along the edge here. and I make a mistake, get outside the lines, it's not a big deal. And it isn't dark all the way through. You can see a little bit of that yellowish green color shining through. So I don't want too much of that, but it does have some of that color in there. Mm. Next I'm gonna add Make sure that's dry. Yeah, it's dry. I'm going to add some of this darker color that I created to some of these areas. So it's a little darker right up here at the top of this leaf and on the hood. So there's some darker areas. It's also a little bit darker inside 
maybe because of the shadow. And this one as well, there's a little bit of a shadow there. And inside here. And I'll add a little bit more shape and definition by adding those darker areas. This is a little darker right here as well. I'm not sure if that's that one's because of lighting or more just because of the plant's composition itself, the leaf composition. And also down here at the bottom, it's a little bit darker. I'm wondering what it would look like if I cut it open, which I might do just for curiosity's sake, maybe with my kids. Lastly, I'm going to just add, deepen some of these veins. And I'll start in the areas that are dry and make sure it's dry first. It's a little wet. So that's pretty dry. It's dry enough. And I'm going to go ahead and add in some of those veins using a much more concentrated reddish color onto the top now that we have all the base colors in. This will really help bring things together the same way those dark micron lines do. Just adding them in wherever I see that veining. Again, starting with the darker ones to kind of give me, helps me out a little bit. It helps me know placement a little bit easier if I just start with the big ones and work in. Maybe because the spaces are smaller then it's easier for my head to handle. So adding these in. And just really kind of all over the place. Using some of my lines that I created to help give me guidance, but a little messy because it is just a sketch. And when I add the micro lines, it'll help define that a bit more. most of the paint off and add a little bit more. So taking the dark color from the top and moving it, or from the bottom, moving it to the top. Oh yeah, I got that really concentrated color again and add it in to my leaf here and all the spots that I see it in. just kind of they have a little bit more of this um, filled in look darker here in the back I'm gonna accentuate that a little bit Adding a little more paint there And 
think I like where that paint's at, so I'll leave the paint there, and now I'll add the ink lines. First, I wanna add in the name of this plant, and I write the scientific name at the top. And then I'm gonna write the common name on the bottom. I got this from the place I purchased this. And I'm gonna start with the 005 micron after making sure that this is dry and add in all those ink lines. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go throughout and add in all of the ink lines to the outlines that I created. Just giving the basic shape, uh, so basically all the drawing lines. If you can still see them, you can just trace right over them. Otherwise, just wanna add a few in and just go throughout and do that. I've added all the 05 lines, so I'm going to move on to the 01. And I noticed I forgot to put some paint down here. Mistakes like that are totally fine. These are waterproof pens, so once you're done, you can add more paint. I'm going to start with the scientific name and the common name, this pen. And then I'm going to add some slightly thicker lines throughout. That looks like enough 01 lines right now. I can always go back later and add more if I need to. I'm going to add in the black micron 08 lines. I'm going to add this to the, comment of the scientific name. Since it is a sketch, you know, little lines, paint in and outside of the line, it just adds character, just makes it a little more fun. just a much more relaxed style than most painting. It's just kind of when you're doing plants and animals, um, you may have to worry a lot about details with other styles. But with this style, you know, we're just kind of getting the idea of the plant on the page, making some observations, and relaxing. Getting to know this picture plant a little bit by drawing it. And I do this a few times, you'll so start seeing things that you didn't see about the picture plant. And the more you do, and the more drawings you do, the more you'll get to know nature through these little observations. If you're thinking about it or not, you're gonna be picking some little things up. I'm gonna quickly switch so I don't forget to the 05 micron because I think there are just some smaller lines in here that I didn't add in. And even in here. And like I said before, it's okay to go back as much as you need. And some of the paints outside the lines here, and that's fine. I redefined it a little bit. too worried about any of these mistakes I've made. Just a representation of the plant. And you can add as much veining as you like. But when you're going back and forth, you can continue to wear paint. 
and more lines and more paint and more lines. Just don't get too carried away with it. It still needs to be fun. So if you get too carried away, it might get to the point where it's not fun anymore. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more paint. And it's pretty red at that place of the leaf. You can see here, kind of this reddish rusty color. I'll just add that in. Oh, and I'll add a little bit more because now the contrast, I can tell that this needs a little bit more as well to this leaf here. And like I said before, it's always okay to go back in outside the lines. It just adds more character. Um, it's okay to go back. Just don't do it too much. Don't get too carried away. And I like where this painting is right now. And you may want to do more to yours. Add some observations to it, whatever it might be. Maybe a dissection on the bottom of one of the leaves. Whatever it is, it's your sketch, so you make it yours. Great job observing your world and keep practicing.